Okay, first let's create a new file. So file and new. I've already got the dimensions typed in, so I'll just hit OK. Create a new fill layer by selecting layer and new fill layer, just so that we can see what we're doing. And I'll make it a nice um, green color. Yep, that's pretty. Click this icon to create a new pixel layer over the top and using the gradient tool, create a nice gradient from top to bottom, like so. Set the top color to pure white and set the bottom color to jet black. Switch to the hand tool just to get rid of the gradient line and make things a little easier to see. Okay, we're all set. So, with our pixel layer selected, select this little cog right here. This will bring up the Blend Options dialog box for our pixel layer. I just want to move the dialog box over here out of the way so that I can see the image a little better. Okay, so now we have our demonstration project set up and ready to go. This is the Blend Ranges dialog. It has two graphs, but for now we'll just look at the left hand side graph. I'll explain how the right hand side graph works later in the video. Now, on this graph, left to right represents black to white. Black and all of the colours in between up to white. So it's black, 50% lightness and pure white. Now vertically, the graph represents opacity or visibility. At the bottom we have invisible or completely transparent to 100% opaque or completely visible at the top of the graph. Now, what we have here is our graph line and our graph line can have points on it. You can add points by clicking the left mouse button and you can remove points with the right mouse button. You can add as many points as you like and remove the points in any order that you like. Or you can add points like so and then move them about using the left mouse button, including the first and last points. You can also hit reset to reset the line completely. Right, as the points on the left of the graph represent dark colours and the further up the graph they are, the more opaque or visible they are. If we pull down this point here, which is completely to the left and so represents black, as we pull the point down the graph, the dark colours starting with black become less visible. Now what we're left with is a gradient or a line representing a gradient, which is saying that as the colours are getting lighter towards white, they're becoming more opaque or more visible. With this point on the graph here being grey or medium grey, 50% grey, being 50% visible. And so the other way around would be true. If I get rid of that with a right click and make the black completely opaque or visible then select the point representing white and move it downwards then the white becomes completely invisible allowing the green to show through underneath here 50% is 50% visible so we're seeing 50% grey and green black is 100% visible so we're seeing it as pure black very good. Let's uh, reset this. If we create a point in the center, remember we're going from black to white and all the colors in between, that would make this point 50% gray. If we move this point down, going from 100% visible to all the way down to 0% visible, now our black is 100% visible 
our white is completely visible, but 50% grey is now 100% invisible or completely transparent, so we're seeing pure green showing through at this 50% grey point. So now if we move our 50% grey point up halfway, as you can see it's 50% visible. We see the green 50% visible and the grey 50% visible. And we have a desaturated green colour. Also, we can move these points left and right. Whoops. We can pull these points left and right, like so. Now my 25% grey is 50% visible. Black is completely visible and white is completely visible. If I move this down, then 25% grey is completely transparent, and complete black is visible, and complete white is visible. Okay, let's bring the black all the way down to the grey to make it more transparent. There it is, completely invisible, and so on. We can also create quite abrupt steps like so. So doing this will make from 50% grey to white 100% visible. We'll make from 50% grey to black completely transparent. We can also create nice smooth curves. Let's just um, move these around a little bit and create another point. Just turn linear off and ping. We have a lovely smooth curve for smoother transitions. Let's just uh, reset that. This does work with color too, so let's just move this out of the way and delete this pixel layer. Create another pixel layer and create ourselves a nice gradient. Actually, let's do it from left to right this time. Set this side to pure white and the other side to pure black. Add another point in the center and set it to, let's see, uh, a medium red, I think. That's 128 on the red, medium red. And this will work in exactly the same way. So move the dialogue. Select the hand to get rid of the line. And now we can play with our blend options. So we'll bring down the black all the way to zero. So black is zero, which is completely transparent. And we get this nice little area here where it's mixing the light red with the green from the background because the light red is about 80% opaque. And of course the white is completely visible. It works perfectly well with color or black and white as it's based on luminosity or brightness. Let's bring down the whites. There we go on that side. And now we have green showing through 100%. Red at 50% and black at 100%. So, as you can see, it doesn't just work with black and white, it works with colour as it's based on luminance or the brightness of the colour. Okay, so now we have the basics. I hope you have a uh, basic grasp of how it works. Let's try a few things, see how we can use this in real-world situations. Let's see what we can actually do with blend ranges. Alright then, here's the first one. And what we are going to do is to use blend ranges to brighten just the highlights in the flowers and the clouds and the house. We will achieve this using a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. So brightness and contrast. 
set the brightness to the level that we require. That seems to be about right. As you can have blend ranges on normal layers or adjustment layers, you can either click this cog here, which is associated with the adjustment layer, or you can hit this cog here on the panel. Let's select it here, move the panel out of the way. Now, if I bring down the opacity of the dark colors and then all of them, this will negate the brightness adjustment. It's as if I've turned it off. If I just move this across, I'm increasing the brightness in just the lighter areas of the picture. So only the highlights are being affected. And here at the moment we have a ramp which goes from medium white colors up to white. But I actually want all of the lighter colors to be much brighter. So if I bring this across, now, all of the lighter colours, including the whites on the roof and the petals of the flowers, are now much brighter. Now I can show the effect. Let's just move this out of the way. So, I'll turn the brightness of contrast layer off, then on and off, on, off, on. You can see that only the bright parts are being affected. See? The dark parts are dark and the light parts are quite light but now when i turn it on the light parts have lightened up but these are exactly the same okay let's see another use okay we're going to attempt to change the color of just the darker parts of the petals on this flower create ourselves a hue saturation and luminance layer like so and we are going to just target the yellows, so we'll select yellows. Now if we just change the hue, you can see it's turning the whole flower and some of the greenery red, or reddy orange. But if I want to just turn the darker parts red, then just select the blend ranges and bring down the blend range opacity of the lighter colors we can see the lighter colors in the flower are turning back to yellow. But I would like the separation to be just a little more abrupt. Now, if I bring this across, then the separation in the colors is a lot more pronounced. So there we go. It's very plain to see that the dark parts of the flower are much more red and the lighter parts are yellow. So let me just turn this off so that you can see the effect properly. There we go, darker parts so that the yellow that they were. Turn it back on again, and now the darker parts are red. So you can selectively choose where you want colour to change based on luminance. This one will be uh, quite different. We're going to attempt to use blend ranges to reduce noise in just the shadows of an image. If we look at this image and then zoom in, we can see that the shadows are quite noisy but in the rest of the image, it's noise free. So we'd like to be able to get rid of the noise in the shadows without affecting the sharpness of the rest of the colors. So one way to achieve this could be to add, say, a Gaussian blur filter. We could use the denoise filter, but this is an experiment and it is worth a try. Just increase the radius until the noise in our shadows has disappeared. We now have no noise at all in the shadows. So let's bring up the layers blend ranges. At the moment it's affecting every colour from black to white. But if we bring this down it will affect none of the colours. So the noise has come back. If we move this to here, so it affects only the shadows like so just a little tweak that has had the effect of removing the noise from our shadows but the lighter colors are perfectly focused not blurred at all perfectly sharp shadows blurry highlights sharp lovely and though we have um, sharpness in the highlights, there's a little 
blur bleed, I suppose. It's not the perfect solution, but it's a really nice experiment. Right then, here's another one for us. If we wanted to give this picture an orange and teal look using the color balance tool, start with shadows and to give ourselves pure cyan, which is actually tealish, add a little blue. Then we'll go into the highlights and add a lot of red and a lot of yellow, so it's orange. We have an orange and teal look, but it's far too strong. Especially in the sky and the clouds, it's given a sort of a weird pinky cast. And in the shadows, the teal looks too strong, it's making it look a little cartoony. We just click on our blend ranges icon and put one point in the middle and then bring down the highlights and the shadows. The effect will be reduced in the very light and very dark areas. Click off linear to get a nice smooth curve. The effect is now more evenly spread. I turn it off and on like so. You can see the orange and teal, but not too much in the highlights or the shadows. Okay, now let's try something completely different and bonkers. You'll probably never do this, but it's worth a shot just for the sake of doing it and a bit of fun. We'll add a lens distortion filter, set the effect to something that looks uh, quite ridiculous. Here we go, okay. Select the blend ranges cog and then bring down the light colors <laughs> to the bottom. Look at that, very strange. You'll probably never use it, but you never know. And here I have a very special effect set up where with one movement of this point, I can make a magic word appear before your very eyes. Three, two, one, and the word appears in all its glory. Isn't that fantastic? Okay then, let's take a look at the right graph on the blend ranges panel. First, let's get set up. Let's create a new fill layer and make it, yep, it's already 50% gray and select its blend ranges. Now, the right side doesn't control this layer's opacity. Uh, it controls what comes through from underneath. If I bring down the whites on the right side here, it will allow through the lighter colors of the underlying layers. So, what I'm saying here is do not allow any of the colors apart from the very bright colors through from the underlying layers. And so we're seeing the very light colors shining through our image. It really doesn't matter what our top layer is, we're just issuing an instruction to say only allow through these lighter colors from all of the underlying layers. And now I'll say just allow the dark colors through. So there, it's just allowing the dark colors from the underlying layers to show through our image. It's giving them more priority in the mix. If I do one in the center, let's do a little center area like so. It will allow only the mid-tone colors to come through. So there we have it, that's what the right panel does. It controls which parts of the underlying layers come through into your image depending on their brightness or luminosity. When a point is at the top of the graph, it's blocking, and when a point is at the bottom of the graph, it's allowing colors through. A very useful feature. <laughs>